I've been thinking about this. What does it mean to do well spiritually? What does that mean when you are quote unquote doing well spiritually? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Losing My Religion channel. Today we are talking about what it means to be doing well spiritually. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, thanks for those to you who subscribe and who comment and who um, reach out to me behind the scenes. As some of you know, I'm a survivor of the International Churches of Christ ICOC cult otherwise known as the Boston Movement. And one of the things in that particular movement was this concept of doing well spiritually. Now, if you were part of a different kind of movement in a different kind of cult or abusive church, then you are probably familiar with this idea. Doing well spiritually, what does that even mean? And how does this metric get measured like how do you tell if you're doing well spiritually well these are all very valid and relevant questions for those of us who consider ourselves to be spiritual people who are trying to live spiritual lives and you know we're trying to figure it out now my position on this channel and in in my real life is that your belief system is yours. That is one of the most personal, sacred aspects of yourself as a human being is your spirituality and your spiritual belief system. I also include atheism in that. I think that the belief system is the belief system. So whatever that is or is not for you is very sacred and very personal and should be honored. Not only by yourself to yourself, but by other people. It should be respected. That's a boundary. And, and I don't believe in telling people what to believe or what they should believe. It is not my place to say. It's not anyone's place to say. That is a very personal decision, a personal part of your existence. And no one gets to say on that but you. So no one has, you know, no one has... The answers, no one has it, it on lockdown. Like what's the right thing to believe? What is the so-called truth? Again, I know people don't like that ambiguous feeling of, well, there has to be this concrete truth, this black and white truth to, to anchor ourselves in. And that's where religion comes in. That's where the more fundamental of religion comes in, the dogmatic beliefs, the religious doctrines, because it gives the human mind some comfort of concreteness and, and security that there is this resource or this, this concrete idea of what's right and what's wrong and what's to believe and what's not to believe to explain existence and what God is and, and all the existential questions that we, we have as humans. So that is the foundation on this channel of, of my being overall. So with that being said, what does it mean to do well spiritually? That is something in my estimation, is up to each and every one of us individually. Part of really being what I call autonomous, meaning, you know, a free thinking person, a person who, you know, in a healthy sense is, is very much self-actualized. 
It means that you are in control of the important aspects of yourself. You have your own identity, you have your own beliefs, and those beliefs are beliefs that are authentic and true to you. They're not things you've been force fed or brainwashed to accept at your own detriment. That whatever it is you believe serves you. Whatever it is you believe honors you, it uplifts you, it edifies you, it benefits and, and it fulfills your life. So what does it mean to do well spiritually? Now in the ICOC, the Boston movement that I was involved with, that particular cult group was a Christian church and they really defined what it meant to be spirit, do well spiritually. And this is goes across the board to most Christian churches and belief systems. Now in the ICOC, it's very evangelical in nature and they are very focused on things like how many times do you read your Bible every day? They used to call them quiet times, quiet times with God, QT for short. So they would use a metric of, do you read your Bible every single day? I.e. your quiet time. How many quiet times are you having a week? And, and their metric for doing well spiritually was, I read my Bible every single day. And then there's le levels to that. So they, they consider doing reading your Bible first thing in the morning at the crack of dawn to be spiritual. Now, if you read your Bible every day before you went to bed at night, that was considered less spiritual because they saw it as you're putting God first by reading your Bible and praying before the start of the day, not at the end. And then there is, you know, reading your Bible in the middle of the day, which they just did not view as spiritual. It seemed to them that you were rushing around, you're busy, you, you're not putting God first, God front and center in your schedule. Jesus is not Lord of your life. So doing what spiritually meant, reading your Bible every day, first thing in the morning, getting up at 6 a.m. to do a prayer walk, to pray Doing well spiritually also meant church attendance. This is a big one. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday for, in the ICOC case, it was Bible talks and devotionals and, you know, every event that the church would have that you were there front and center. So that was considered a metric of how spiritual you were. Literally, if you missed too many services, people would question your relationship with God. They would think that you have fallen away from God, that you have returned to the world, that you are weak spiritually, that you're struggling. If they don't see you in church every Sunday, if they don't see you all the time at every event, you are considered to be weak spiritually or questionable. Your spiritual status is questionable. Church attendance shows that. Now, again, there's levels to this. There's the basic church attendance, but some people attend it every week, but we're not considered spiritual. It also hinges on where you sit at church. Do you sit in the back up against the wall? Or are you sitting front and center in the front first three rows? Doing well spiritually also was measured by how vocal you were as an audience member during sermons. When people were up on stage speaking and sharing, how vocal were you? Were you participating in active call-outs such as saying amen or come on and these kinds of call outs from the audience to cheer on the person at the podium or at the microphone speaking in the front was seen as a metric of spirituality 
that you were doing well spiritually, if you were actively, vocally participating in the service as an audience member. Another metric for doing well spiritually in the ICOC and many churches is your level of evangelism. The ICOC called this being fruitful. Your fruitfulness meant everything. And fruitfulness meant how many people do you bring to church? Your visitors, as they would say. How many visitors would you have to every single event? And then it's how many people do you have personally studying the Bible? So your level of spirituality was directly measured with your fruitfulness. So you needed to be constantly inviting people to church, having people show up to church with you, and then study the Bible with those people. And these people, the level of your spirituality would be measured by, again, there's levels. So they would measure the, the quality or the sharpness of the person or people you would have to church and study the Bible with. So if you were bringing out people that they considered not to be sharp, they would consider that low hanging fruit. And the more of the so-called sharp people in society that you would bring and recruit and study and convert, that, that increased your level of spirituality. So the ICOC leaders often nonstop chastise members for not being fruitful, for not caring about the lost people, you know, they saw everyone is not who is not in the church lost to go into hell. So they said, well, if you, wherever you're at, if you're out living your life, if you were not constantly thinking about evangelizing and saving souls, which meant inviting them to church, studying the Bible with them, baptizing them, then you were not spiritual. And so the amount of people you baptized, the amount of visitors you had was a direct measure of your spirituality. Now, a lot of these things or all of these things have one thing in common, performance. These are performance metrics. These are things that they can look at and put on a spreadsheet. It's like, how many people have you had to church this month? Nine people. And they can write it in the little box of visitors. How many people are you studying the Bible with? One. They put the one in the, in the box under that, that category. So these are, are numbers. And that was correlated directly with your spirituality. It meant you were doing well spiritually. And there are other metrics that are all performance based, you know, um, people who are fasting and praying, people who are in leadership positions in the ICOC. If you were, if you were chosen to disciple people, to lead a Bible talk, you know, to be in a leadership position in a church meant you are doing well spiritually. They would say, God has called you but it's really the church appointing you, but you know, that's how they measured it. So now here we are on the outside of the group of the cult of the church of the religious matrix. And the question begs to be answered. What does it mean to be doing well spiritually? And the answer is pretty simple. It's up to each of us to decide. Do we want it to be measured by other people, other organizations, other leaders, other cult gurus, the media, our, our parents, or do we want to define this for ourselves? After all, it is our spirituality. It's our path. It's our relationship with God or whoever we believe or don't believe in. So, why should we continue to allow other people to dictate to us what being spiritual means? Because at the end of the day, if someone else can dictate that for us, 
And those of us who were cult members, who are survivors of spiritual abuse, we, we know firsthand that when other people can dictate what spirituality is and what being spiritually well looks like, they can control us from the inside out. And, and they can pull their strings and dictate to us what being spiritual and doing well spiritually means. And what that results in is never being able to measure up never feeling good enough, never feeling like you're right with God or your belief, who you believe in. You never feel like you're enough. And then it becomes impossible. And then you just go down the rabbit hole, a dark place, because other people are dictating it. It's a carrot you never can catch. So again, what does it mean to do well spiritually? You tell me. Until next time.